Welcome to the Fitness and Lifestyle Podcast. I'm your host, Danny Kennedy, and I'm here to help you become the very best version of yourself. What's up, guys? Welcome back to this week's episode of the Fitness and Lifestyle Podcast. Uh, our guest today, Mitch Third, is the co-founder of Third Fix. They're the number one uh, fitness bottles in Australia. Um, their mission is to reduce single-use plastic, um, which they're doing an incredible job of. This man also is a, a bit of a master at personal branding as well, which I, I want to touch on today. Um, and I'm really looking forward to this conversation as well. If you're not following his content already, um, I guarantee after today you will. I'll have the links to all his socials and obviously uh, third fix as well within the show notes. But um, Mitch, welcome to the show, brother. Thanks for having me, bro. Grateful to be here. Absolute pleasure, man. Mate, I, I, I actually don't know kind of your background story myself, so I'd love to kind of dive into that to, to kick things off. So I know you're an aspiring rugby player um, in the earlier days. What, um, I guess, where you grew up on the Gold Coast, I believe. When did you start your career, I guess, within rugby? And was that something that you started at a super young age? Yeah, super young age, bro. So born and raised on the Gold Coast, started playing footy when I was four or five years old. Um continued playing up until you know schoolboy level made national sides made australian schoolboys australian 20s like that really was the dream was mm-hmm. to be a professional rugby union player um man and i got i pretty much got it delivered to me on a silver platter one day i i got asked to move down to canberra um, played semi-professional there and then got offered a, a full-time contract with the brumbies and I basically said no to um, to go travelling with with the girlfriend at the time, and um, yeah, look, it, thinking back on it now, it's probably like, what was I thinking? But I'm super grateful for for the life I have now and the journey I'm on, and I'd love to get into more as to to, mm. to that journey and and where I've been. But uh, yeah, that was that was kind of the the journey coming up was aspiring rugby union player, um, but then yeah, just sort of aligned more to being an entrepreneur mm-hmm. and having my own brand and, and to where I am now. Take us through, I guess, your um, how you kind of, your perception of that decision from then to now. So at the time, obviously, I'm assuming madly in love, saying no to it, to a contract. Um, and then also, was that was that the complete end of the rugby career from that point there? No, it wasn't the end. I suppose for me right now, I'm big on intuition and, and my gut feeling. Mm-hmm. And back then I didn't really understand what that was, but my intuition was telling me like, there's more to life than yep. being a rugby player. And at the time as a rugby player, it's very, you know, you have to follow a strict schedule. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to do exactly what the coaches say, what the manage- management says. And at the time I, I kind of wanted to be my own boss and, and live on my own terms. So. Um, I went on this holiday and the holiday was actually um, to Bali. So went on the holiday, um, came across an extremely polluted beach. Mm -hmm. Um, And from there, I just grew a passion for the environment. And on that beach, um, more specifically, it was just like single use plastic water bottles. And so in my head, I'm like, how can I create a reusable water bottle that would prevent people from buying single use plastics? So I continued to play footy. I moved from Canberra back home to the Gold Coast, Mm -hmm. um, continued to play semi-professional rugby. And as a rugby player, you have your protein shakes. And as I was having sort of my protein, I was sick of supplements getting stuck on the corner. And that in turn is why your shake is kind of smell. So I was kind of like, how can I create a product that prevents people from buying single-use plastic bottles plus uh, solve the issue of supplementation getting stuck in the corner. So mm. started drawing some things up, uh, went on Alibaba, some Chinese manufacturers and, and came up with the uh, the third fixed round bottom shaker that I have today. Man, that's crazy. I'm a big believer in the fact that everything happens for a reason. Um, you know, countless things, even in my own life that I can think back on that at the time was devastating and, and did not seem like it was a, a great, great way that things were going to go. Um, have now turned out to be an absolute blessing. So clearly this is, has been the case for you. From that moment there when you, you kind of jump on Alibaba, start sussing out a few different designs and whatnot, um, how quickly did you decide that this was going to be a business venture that you wanted to pursue? And then how long after that, I guess, did you kind of call it quits on rugby and go all in? So it's extremely hard. First and foremost, my parents, they sacrificed so much throughout mm-hmm. school um, to put me in the best education, the Southport School on the Gold Coast. Um I think it's like 
$20,000 per term just to Jesus. go to school there, right? And so I went there to play rugby. So my parents sacrificed a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I started playing rugby since I was four years old and that was a dream. And so to like tell my parents that I'd yeah. been given this contract and <laughs> I said no, um, you know, they were pretty, they were absolutely devastated. So first and foremost, to go through that um, was extremely hard. And then the process of actually getting samples, creating the product, creating a brand, um, I continued to play rugby because the decision to say no to that contract was also um, the living environment and where I was in Canberra. Like Canberra's a pretty miserable place. Um, (laughs) It was extremely hard waking up at 6, 7 a.m. There was frost on your your car and it was so cold. and Very different to the Gold Coast. And and I was, yeah, exactly. I was was from the Gold Coast and I I was an 18-year-old kid that was, um, you know, I wasn't in the the greatest like mindset with all that happening. So um, I I moved back up to the Gold Coast, Mm -hmm. a place where I'm much happier, continued to play rugby and started third fix just on the side. And so at the time, Instagram wasn't what it was today. You know, Mm -hmm. it was sort of just... A platform where you post your holiday pics or yeah. your food or whatever yeah. it wasn't the whole branding and and huge business platform that it is today yeah. so at the time uh, me and my girlfriend traveled actually a fair bit and so we documented that she took a lot of photos and as her instagram started building up uh, we would just take photos of the bottles and i'd start getting you know a fair few sales and i was like hold on i can i can actually make a living mm-hmm. from this so that was back in about 2018. I just had a few samples we're taking photos with. Uh, 2019, I started making an like okay coin from. Yep. And at the time of this, actually, I was um, I was at uni doing a double degree. So right. I was trying to trying to be a rugby player. I was um, at university studying a double degree of exercise science and psychology. So the goal was to be a rugby player, and when I retired, become a sports psychologist. So I had rugby uni and third fix on the side and just how everything aligned and how my journey was going it was i finished the degree had no passion whatsoever for it anymore Mm -hmm. um i actually suffered a pretty bad knee injury had my acl and mcl surgery so that took me out for a year so when i look back on it now it was really like the universe just telling me like go all in on mm-hmm. third fix like this is what yep. this is your purpose this is your why now um sort of forget about rugby like you had your chance there and you know i'll also I'll, it's I'll just always, a chapter yeah exactly yeah. it's almost like a season in my life so everything was just aligning towards third fix and as instagram was blowing up um so did the brand and then uh covid came along man and that's pretty much where sales just went through the roof went through the roof you mentioned before that you're pretty big now on listening to your intuition and, and I guess kind of taking signs from the universe, as you would put it. Um, has that always been the case? Like obviously it, it comes across that way when we talk about this decision to knock back the contract and go all in with with your passion. Um, is that something that was instilled in you from an early age, I guess, from people around you or is it something that just gradually you kind of just figured out yourself? It's just gradually something I've leaned into. I think um, I think everyone has intuition and gut feelings. It's just about leaning into it and knowing how to use it. Mm-hmm. And I suppose on this sort of like self-development journey I've been on, um, I've really leaned into some spiritual things and routines and habits that have all just aligned so that I do have this overall sort of holistic approach on life. But growing up, I mean, that stuff was very woo-woo. My dad's yeah. like a very hard, tough man. Um, <laughs> my mum's, you know, just like a, a nice nurturing person, so they're not very spiritual or anything. Yeah. Even when I tell them this yeah. is these days... My dad's just kind of like, mate, you're just, you're just working hard and achieving <laughs> things. Like, yeah. So growing up, nothing nothing special. I think um, just through curiosity and wanting to learn and grow as a person, um, these sort of holistic and woo-woo stuff have just come into my life. With Third Fix, did you have, um, did you have any mentors or people around you that were kind of guiding you through the business aspect of things? Because obviously coming from being an athlete, studying, uh, not studying business um, with your degree or double degree, um, where were you just kind of learning on the fly with with the whole e-commerce thing and, and how much time I guess were you kind of putting into getting like learning the systems and learning bits and pieces from others around the business side or was it all just literally trial and error it was all just trial and error I mean in my family all, all my uncles and my dads are entrepreneurs they all have mm-hmm. like their own businesses so 
I think subconsciously I was I was sort of brought up to yep. be my own boss and and live on my own terms. So that was always kind of there. Um, but it was just everything was just on the go, failing, trialing, you know, just really trialing and error everything I could. Um, and it's been it's been a hard journey, man. Like don't get me mm. wrong, not everything has been like successful and positive. There's been um, some pretty big setbacks, but uh, yeah, it was. It was weird because, like, as the time, Instagram was just growing and so no one really knew what, like... There was no playbook. Yeah, yeah. there was no playbook by it. So, you know, I was I was looking at other people and, and using influencer marketing. And even back then, it wasn't even influencer marketing. It was just, like, giving products to mates who had following or yeah. who were good at taking photos and mm-hmm. stuff. And you now look at it now, influencer marketing so big. But I suppose I was super lucky in terms of, you know, just sending out product and yeah. in return getting sales. You mentioned COVID before and how that kind of blew up the business and it, and it worked in your favor, I guess. What was the reaction initially? And, and I think for a lot of businesses, um, you know, it, it did end up being, uh, I want to make sure I, don't, I word this properly, ended up being a bit of a blessing for a lot of businesses. But I think for everybody initially, it was like a bit of shock and like, ah, oh, fuck, like what's going to happen here? So was there that period of unknown for you guys and, and what were the big adjustments you had to make? Because I think one of the biggest things that I took away from COVID is how quickly everyone can adapt to yeah, major sure. change um so so what were those adaptions that you had to make or adaptations sorry yeah so in 2019 i'd say 80 percent of my sales were wholesale so going into okay. gyms stores um i had big distribution companies that were mm-hmm. you know distributing my product everywhere in 2020 that was then zero percent mm-hmm. you know all gyms closed all stores closed so i had to adapt and um from there i found a digital marketing agency and they helped me so much with Facebook ads, Facebook, Instagram ads, mm-hmm. Google ads. And from there, it was just really leaning into marketing, content creation, advertising, because everything was just online, right? Everyone's at home getting $700, $800 from the government, mm-hmm. not knowing what to spend their money <laughs> on, right? So, you know, I sort of leaned in on the, you know, the bottle, the, the bottle you could sort of work out with from home. Yep. Um, so yeah, it w- you had to adapt, man. And, and I think the brands that adapted quickly and yeah, the, the brands that adapted quickly did the best. Um, but I'm super grateful for COVID bro. Like it really transformed my business. And I think a lot of uh, founders can say that, but, um, yeah, the digital marketing agency that jumped on board with me, um, we went up five six hundred percent compared to the year before yeah i think in 2020 i did 800k in in overall revenue and 2019 was like 70 grand or something like that like it really exploded my business um and like i said before people were just getting grants from the government and just spending money on yeah on online shopping man that's hectic again from a personal um perspective how what did you i guess were there many changes that you made or um Things that, that changed in, within your own life as a, as a person and, you know, mentioned now about how you lean into your spiritual side of things. Is this something that you're already kind of tapping into prior to that? Or did you learn, like, I guess, what did you learn about yourself throughout COVID and, and going through all the lockdowns and whatnot that yep. everyone had to kind of go by? So I think you should work harder on yourself when you do your business. Mm. If you uh, work on your physical health, mental health, spiritually, emotions, if you just work on yourself overall as a person, you show up better for your business and everything with your business comes easier. So back in 2020, I wasn't really happy where I was as a person. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd just come out of a, a really bad injury where, to be honest, my mental health probably wasn't that great. Um, and I really just wanted to change my life. So I started researching about self-development and what I could do to become the best version of myself. And I started um, creating sort of a morning routine so that every day I could stick to that so that when I would work on Third Fix or any other ventures, Mm -hmm. I was in such a clear state, had amazing clarity and just like made really good decisions. So um, I started to create a morning routine that I stick by religiously to Mm -hmm. this day. Um, That morning routine is waking up with the sun so it's really important to sort of wake up the sun with the sun for your circadian rhythm. Mm-hmm. So I wake up, it's roughly around 6 a.m. And then I'll go for a, like a five kilometer walk, just like get the blood flowing, yep. get the body moving. And then I'll do 10 minutes of breath work, just the Wim Hof yep. breathing technique yep. that 
honestly, bro, has changed my life. Like, Absolute that man game changer, is, isn't it? It's such amazing. a guru in terms of the the breathing exercises and the cold therapy goes on about. So I incorporate breath into my into my routine, and then because it changes sort of your mindset and your pH in your blood and everything like that, puts you in this like really zen state. So I'll then lead into meditation. Mm-hmm. Um, meditation has if. The listener at home can take one thing from this podcast today. It's meditate every single day. It has mm. helped my life so much. So I do 10, 15 med- uh, minutes of meditation, whether that's just a timer of silence or guided mm-hmm. meditation. And then I listen to positive affirmations leading into writing down three things I'm grateful for and then play my day. So that morning that's routine epic. is around two to two and a half hours and that's all to benefit me mm-hmm. to become the best version of myself and so that I'm putting my best foot forward for Third Fix, Authentic Collection and all the other brands that I've got working on. Outside of the meditation aspect, obviously you've just kind of labelled that as one of the key components. For someone listening, you know, people like yourself and, and I uh, uh, probably had the luxury of being able to kind of work around our, our own kind of time schedule, running our own businesses and whatnot. But for a lot of people listening that are, Maybe they've got kids, got a family or, or start a job at an early hour in the morning, whatever it may be, and, and may not have the, the luxury of having two hours or whatever to do their mm-hmm. morning routine. What would be kind of one major player out of that morning routine that you would advise someone to, to give a bit of a try that doesn't have necessarily as much time? It would be it 110% be meditation. I mean, there's 24 hours in the day and all you have to do is 10 minutes a day. Mm. Like, it's so little of your time and it's so beneficial like there's so many benefits to meditating i believe um your thoughts control your emotions your emotions control your behavior and that in turn controls your reality and so what meditation does it it controls um how you talk to yourself you know that that subconscious voice how that's talking to yourself um your overall thoughts um and like i said like thoughts control your emotions Mm. emotions control your behavior so meditation it's it's a game changer man um and there's so many people dealing with depression anxiety stress and and this helps so so much um there's apps that i use calm and i think self timer i think it's called yeah they've been absolutely game changing Mm -hmm. and it's just 10 minutes a day whether it's first thing in the morning or first thing at night um it's absolutely changed my life it's made me such a calmer person. It's made me have so much clarity yeah. in my work, how I talk to myself. Like, it's so, so important. So that's my number one tip. Yeah, I've found like your, the biggest impact for me is, is like your base level of, um, of calmness or even like your, your energy at the very start of the day. So even if I get fuck all done for the rest of the day, I feel productive. And But the best thing is I'm a big kind of believer in momentum. And, you know, by the time you leave the house after getting that routine done, I'm quite similar to you. I'll do, um, you know, I do the breath work, cold shower, meditation, some journaling uh, before I leave the house. And that momentum carries over to every aspect. And obviously someone busy like yourself, um, that carry over for the rest of the day is incredible. It kind of, you get the hardest shit done first. Yeah, and, then, just, and then everything it, just feels just, amazing, doesn't it? It just puts you in like such a spring and yeah. you want to attack the day. Like I feel amazing after getting out of that cold shower, writing things I'm grateful for, mm-hmm. my whole perspective on life, listening to positive affirmations, waking up with the sun. Like you feel amazing. Yeah. There's no way that you can be depressed or not, not motivated. So um, I think putting a morning routine in is so, so important um, and it just sets you up for your day. You mentioned a little earlier about how there's been a number of setbacks, um, I'm assuming within the business and maybe just mm-hmm. in life in general as well. What's your approach to setbacks now, now that you've kind of got this morning routine and, you, and there's a bit more of a spiritual side um, to your life as well? Do you have a bit of a process or, or you know, mentally, what are the tools, I guess, you use to, to really deal with a setback and, and spin it to be either a positive or to at least kind of use that as a learning curve and, and continue moving forward? So mentally, um, the phrase I tell myself is living in the past is depression, living in the future is anxiety and living in the present is happiness. So although things may have gone wrong, like for me, like I might might have oversold a product or stock count may, may be out or something that goes wrong, right? Or like shipping times or something. There's nothing you can do about it, right? It, that, that has happened in the past. If you think about everything that's going to happen in the future, you're going to be you're going to be anxious, you're going to be stressed, which will affect your present. Mm-hmm. So for me, is is just staying super present, 
Um, because like I said, if you're living in either the future or, or the past, it doesn't help. So my mentality is always um, be extremely present and just and just one foot forward after the other. Um, don't think about you know what's going to happen in a month's time or, or what happened a month ago. As long as you can be super present uh, with those setbacks, then that makes it, that makes it just the process so much easier. It sounds like you've got a quite a high level of self awareness, which is which is awesome, and for a lot of people, it's something that's really hard to achieve. But once you unlock it, it's it's an absolute game changer. What are the areas, or maybe there's one, or maybe there isn't any, um, that you feel like maybe super vulnerable about vulnerable about at the moment, or or something that you really kind of want to work on within yourself that I wouldn't say is an issue, but but something that you have kind of addressed that you really are trying to work on at the moment. Yeah, I reckon about two months ago, I did like a a self audit i suppose i really like took myself out of my shoes and um looked at my morals my values my why my purpose what i was doing in life who i was surrounding myself with and there was a point where i looked at and so i'm very like i'll I'll post my morning routine almost every morning um i want to be that inspiring motivating guy for people you know where they're waking up going oh mitch that's doing it then i want to do it he's motivating me and they got to a point where I was doing those things for other people and not myself. Yep. And so I took a break from social for, I think it was a week. I know it doesn't sound a lot, but, <laughs> but when you're posting, when daily, you're posting yeah. every single day, um, it, do, it does take a toll. So I took a week off socials. I did my morning routine and my night routine, didn't post it. And I came back to my roots as to why I was doing it. And I just felt way more present doing it. And I actually got way more benefits. Like, I started getting getting the tingling feelings I used to get with breath. Yeah, and yeah. when I was actually finishing my meditation, I was like this euphoric sort of feeling mm-hmm. instead of like screenshotting the meditating app, posting yeah. it and saying, this is what I did. I just sort of sat with it and I actually felt so much better. So that was something, it was almost like imposter syndrome kind of thing. Like I had to be this guy. Yeah. I had to live up to being that inspiring and motivating guy. But like I had to really step back as to why was I doing those things in the first place? It was for myself. I wanted to change myself. I wanted to grow as a person. And I want to continue growing and evolving and one percent better every day. And I couldn't do that when I was putting other people's, you know, putting them first before myself. So um, that was a really good sort of self-awareness thing of, of me was stepping back and understanding why I was actually doing things. Mm. I think like, uh, I'm sure you probably think the same thing, but I, I'm a big believer as well in the fact that, you know, you're a product of your environment and, you know, whatever the saying is, you're the product of the five people you surround yourself with, whatever. Um, for people that do watch your content um, or kind of know a bit about you, um, obviously you have a bit of a mix um, between like a lot of the spiritual side of stuff but you also live like a pretty enjoyable life and, and, and live it up from time to time as well which I think everyone should uh, if they have the ability to do so how do you kind of separate the two you know what I mean and like other people that you're surrounding yourself with when you do kind of party and whatnot and the people that you're surrounding yourself outside of those times is it two separate different groups or, or how do you kind of separate the two and make sure that they all don't kind of just blend into one so a big reason for me moving to Melbourne, so I just moved to Melbourne mm-hmm. four weeks ago, I was living on the Gold Coast, um, was to just get out of the drinking scene. For me, I went through a pretty tough breakup this time last year, um, went into drinking heavily a lot every single weekend. And to be honest, I was having so much fun. Like yeah. I was in a relationship for a, pretty much a decade, like nine years I was yeah. in a relationship for. So I was having so much fun drinking and partying, but it got to a stage where... I almost created habits around drinking. Like every every Friday, Saturday sometimes, I was drinking every weekend. And the thing was, I wasn't getting any negatives from it until recently. Like I was getting no hangovers. Um, <laughs> my clarity throughout the week was quite good. Yeah. Um, but until recently, I, I started feeling like a big effect on, on the clarity I was getting at work. And um, like you said before, the people who I was hanging around, majority of the time, especially at the start of the breakup i was hanging around successful people entrepreneurs brand owners um so that was quite good Mm -hmm. um but i'd say in the last sort of three four months when you stay in that party lifestyle and in that scene you start hanging around with people who who don't have jobs or you know that they're not happy and they're, they're drinking to escape and so i started 
attracting myself towards these these people and i'm a big believer on you know vibrational frequencies high vibrational Mm -hmm. frequencies attract high vibe and vice versa low vibrational frequencies attract low vibrational frequencies so what was happening on the weekends when i was drinking i was attracting you know these these drinking friends and people who weren't actually my friends and um it's been a big decision uh, moving down to Melbourne but I think it's been a really important one of just getting out of that scene and Mm. separating myself from those people Uh, I'm not sure whether you've had to have these conversations but it sounds a bit by the sounds of it um, I'm assuming you have but how what advice would you have for people listening at the moment that kind of have the self-awareness of knowing that maybe there are certain people that are hanging around that aren't uh, they don't have their best interest at, at heart or even, and it could be a family member it could be someone who they've spent you know friend being friends with their whole life and whatnot and they have no no bad feelings against them but they know that they kind of need to separate themselves from them I, I don't have the answer to that because i know there's so many people in my life that i've just kept there because um i'm scared of hurting them or i know they're not good for me but i'll just keep them there because maybe for comfort or or anything like that so that's another big reason of moving to melbourne is I can, here in Melbourne, I can honestly be whoever I want to be. I can show up as anyone I want and mm-hmm. I can attract the type of people in my life. And so on the Gold Coast, I was I had friends who I went to school with who yeah. I sort of grew up, grew up with and you have that excuse of being friends with them because mm-hmm. of that. So moving down to Melbourne um, has been amazing in terms of the people who I've been surrounding myself with. But in terms of your question, man... It really depends on how important your why and your purpose is. So if your why is bigger than partying every weekend, then it's, it should be pretty simple. And also, um, those people who you have those hard conversations with, if they're not understanding, they shouldn't be in your life. Yeah. And if they are understanding, then they'll understand that, you know, they get it, you want it, you want to grind, you want to chase your passion and you know, whatever it is, financial freedom or being your own boss or go travel the world, whatever it Mm. is, they'll be understanding of that. And if they're not understanding, they shouldn't be in your life. Brother, what is your, I guess, what's your perception around manifestation and and manifesting? Obviously, as meditation becomes uh, a lot more mainstream now and and people have access to different apps and whatnot and and people, you know, bring up things like the law of attraction and and, um, vibrational frequencies and whatnot, manifestation gets thrown around a lot. And I think everyone's idea of what it actually is and and how the process works is very different. So how do you, what is your view on it? Man, I'm so glad you brought that up. I feel like manifesting and manifestation as a whole um, has become so mainstream and people don't actually know what it is and and how to do it. So I'd love to talk about it um, holistically, like as a whole, because even on the weekend when I was back on the Gold Coast for my birthday, um, I was talking to my mate and I congratulated him. He just got a car and I was like, congrats on getting a car, it's awesome. And he goes, yeah, man, I manifested it. And I was like, did you? And he's like, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, okay, what'd you do to manifest his car? And he, you know, he didn't do anything. So... I'll talk about manifestation as a whole because holistically it's it's like a way of life. So um, I'll talk about it like the cellular level. So like quantum physics, like attracts like. Okay, that's basically um, like the law of attraction. And so in this universe, everything is made up of atoms. Me, you, this microphone, the sky. Okay, everything is made up of atoms. But what differentiates us between let's say the sky is our vibrational frequencies, okay? So you have your high vibrational frequencies and you have your low vibrational frequencies. And like I said before, like attracts like. So high vibrational frequencies attract high vibrational frequencies Mm -hmm. and vice versa. So like I was saying before, I feel like your thoughts, your feelings and emotions have vibrational frequencies. So I believe Mm -hmm. the key to manifestation is actually meditation because when you meditate... You're, you're controlling your thoughts, you're controlling how you talk to yourself, um, and that that's actually how you're controlling to live in that high vibrational frequency. So in order to live at such a high vibe, you want to be living through gratitude, through positivity, through love, compassion, all those things, because you'll then attract that into your life. And vice versa, if you're living your life at a low vibrational frequency through you know, fear, guilt, anger, sadness, depression, you'll attract that into your life. So the word vibe, like, you know, that guy's a vibe or this place of vibe is actually talking about vibrational frequencies. So um, manifesting as a whole, 
you need to meditate first and foremost. So these are some things you can do to live at a high vibrational frequency as well as manifest things in your life. So first and foremost, you need to meditate. Um, I believe practicing gratitude helps so much at living at a high vibe, Um, listening to positive affirmations, Mm -hmm. especially in the morning. So your brain is actually in the morning in a theta state. And so what that means, it's super sensitive to receiving information. So if you're listening to positive affirmations like, you know, I'm deserving of abundance of money and happiness. I am powerful. I am beautiful. Whatever it is, these positive things, your brain actually really thinks it is. Mm. So um, that's another way. And just overall living your life through a real positive outlook on life. Um I think visual boards as well are extremely important Mm -hmm. for manifesting things. And with these visual boards, whether it's in your bedroom, your office, whatever it is, subconsciously just walking past it every day, it needs to be super specific. So um, I think a car is a good example. You know, what model, what color, what year is that car? Put that on your visual board and think about that every day. And another thing uh, we spoke about uh, before the podcast was really sitting with how it looks, how it feels, how it sounds, all those things. Um, You know, how does the steering wheel feel? How does the seat feel? Mm -hmm. You know, what does it look like you being in that Ferrari or the Tesla, whatever it is. Um, Envisioning yourself already in a position of having the material or being in a good relationship or or having the money in your account. Yeah, so it's for me, manifesting as a whole is living um, at a high vibrational frequency as well as um, and the way you do that is meditating, gratitude, positive affirmations, um, and living your life through a really positive aspect. And then having your visual board and knowing what it feels, looks, and sounds like. And I heard a really good quote the other day. Manifestation, like I said before, can be also a bad thing because if you live your life at a low vibrational frequency, you'll attract that. But a really good quote I, um, I heard the other day was, if you are always thinking about how good your future life will be or how amazing your dream life will be whilst being disappointed in your current life, you will always manifest an unhappy life in the present. Mm. So if you're always thinking about what's next on the go, you know, you manifest something, don't worry about it, don't sit with it, just keep thinking about what's next whilst being just unhappy with your life, you'll always manifest an unhappy present. And so I think it's so important just... You know, when you do achieve things, when you hit goals, when you manifest things, like smell the roses, like you're deserving of it. Um, because if you're always thinking about what's next, it's not good. Yeah, a, a past guest of the show, Emma Murray, put it, uh, puts it really well. She uses the term of um, trying to get rid of the mindset of I'll be happy when. Yeah, you know, if you can remove yourself ch- from chasing. that, yeah, and then just re- just uh, just to finish off this this kind of topic as well, the you mentioned before the th- the theta state and how like listening to those positive affirmations in the morning, same rules apply at night too, like because when you're falling, it's like just as you're about to fall asleep and you reach that state where you feel like drowsy, you're still awake but you're a bit drowsy, that's when you start to reach that theta state and by listening to these affirmations or something positive or something that's that's kind of around that manifestation or what you want to envision yourself or your life as even once you're asleep your brain is is still consuming these things your consciousness is still in that state it's super powerful stuff so i reckon a really good thing would be in the morning um listen to positive affirmations and then at night time when you're going to sleep would be really sitting with how does your dream life look like? What does it feel like? Mm -hmm. What does it sound like? All that. Yeah, that's it. Powerful stuff, man. Running, I guess, multiple businesses um, like you do, uh, but also having the spiritual side, which, uh, man, I'm absolutely loving this conversation because it's right up my alley as well. What's your definition of success at the moment and has that changed from when you first started Third Fix to where you are now? Yeah, I think... Um, my definition of success changes probably every three months. I mean, <laughs> when, I, when I grow as a person, I'm learning so much yeah. of, of life um, holistically as a whole. Um, so for me, it, it used to be, you know, the materialistic stuff, like the cars, the girls, yeah. all that, all that sort of stuff. And you have to go through that to understand that it's not what you actually want. Um, So for me, my goal and my definition of success is financial freedom. I believe everyone wants financial freedom. I don't think money buys you happiness, but it buys you the freedom to do whatever you want. You can chase your passion. You can be your own boss. You can create your own brands. 
Um, so for me, financial freedom is the goal and is the definition for success. Um, and I believe the way you do that is you basically, what you have to do is you have to document everything that's going on in your life. And I don't mean get out of camera and start a daily vlog or whatever. Mm. It's okay, I've got customer service here. I need to document every single response in terms of this email. Okay, she's saying that, that means I need to respond this way. So document everything with customer service. With social media, how do you write captions? How do you take content? How are you scheduling? Document everything. Logistics, marketing, Mm -hmm. document everything so that it becomes so systemized, um, automized, and then you can delegate. Yeah. So once you've documented everything, you can then delegate um, people to come in and you have to be self-aware and understand what your weaknesses are so that when you're delegating, you're putting people in who are extremely good at your weaknesses. Mm-hmm. And because you've documented it all, it's all systemized. It's pretty much automatic. These people are just coming in. You know, um, it's going to be done the way yeah, you want it to be done. Exactly. And putting those people in who are better than you is extremely important. And then the final step for me would be getting um, a second in charge or a CEO. So someone who's just as good as you if not better, so that you can then get paid to basically think or work on your business instead of for it. Or in it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? So you're working, you're working on it or you're creating other brands or chasing mm-hmm. other passions. So all you're doing is pretty much getting paid to think because you've documented everything. Everything is in a structure or in a system. It's all automatic. You've delegated and then you've got someone second in charge or a CEO. So then you can really step back And you're basically getting paid for that financial freedom so that you can work on the brand or for other passions. You mentioned delegation, which which is obviously a big part of scaling a business as well. Um, And coming back to the intuition side of things, um, are you someone that believes in particularly early days, like earlier on you mentioned like learning about the Facebook ads and, and whatnot. Is that something that you tried to learn yourself so you had the perfect understanding of it or is it something that you realize and this may be other areas of the business as well, but areas where you, which you realise you either don't enjoy or just aren't good at, do you straight away kind of palm that up to someone who is much better at it and not even worry about trying to learn it? Or, or what kind of, um, I guess, level do you try and get an understanding of everything? So when I first started Third Fix, I had a pretty big ego in terms of I could do everything. I'm the best at everything. Um, I didn't need anyone to come in because I had such a big ego that, you know, this brand was my little baby. If I had someone coming in and... I don't know, maybe stuffing it up, I'd, I wouldn't like that. So it was tough for me to actually get employees in. And it got to the stage where I'm like, okay, I actually can't do everything in here. I need to get someone in. Um, the first mistake I made was um, hiring someone to do everything. So she came in, she packed, she did right. customer service, she ran the socials, she took the content, like she did everything. And my business actually went backwards mm-hmm. because... The person who I got in, I was actually better than her at everything. Like I was teaching her. Yeah, this so you were doing. Her. You were both doing the same. Exactly. Both doing the job. Yeah. So I was teaching her how to write replies, how to run socials, how to take content, how to pack orders. But now looking back at it, the first and foremost thing, my biggest weakness was customer service. So replying to DMs, emails, messages. That was the first person I got. So I got someone who had actually worked with like Bondi Sands, a mm-hmm. massive company. She ran. She was a manager of the customer service. So I got her involved. Um, I then got someone to run all my socials and my marketing. So she runs that. Um, And now I've got an agency that runs all my Facebook, Instagram, TikTok ads. And then I've now set up a 3PL. So they run Mm. all my logistics, the packing, everything. So now I can step back and I can start to delegate more people. And then even those people who are in those positions, like my first social media girl I got, she's hired someone underneath her awesome. so that she has more time to do to do mm-hmm. better things and more things. So I'm, I'm definitely at the stage now, like I've got um, five em- oh no, six employees for Third Fix. And um, yeah, it's allowed me to work on my new clothing brand. It's allowed me to work on other ventures I've got going on. I started a mentorship like a few weeks ago. That's opened up time for me. Um, so yeah, this is all because of my why and my purpose. Like my why is financial freedom and my purpose is through Third Fix and Authentic Collection. Yeah. Tell us about Authentic Collection and, and where that's at. And I guess, has it been a lot smoother and easier now that you've had the experience of starting Third Fix and, and running an e-commerce brand already? So initially it was called Third Fix Collection. Yeah. Um, and it was me and my ex who co-founded it. 
And it's been, honestly, bro, it's been the biggest headache after the breakup. Um, it's been, yeah, extremely difficult. And so when we broke up, I try to rebrand it. I try to go for this holistic approach of, you know, everything that I sort of stand for. So I called it Authentic Collection. The first drop we did um, was all female and we did like a breath work and a meditation event mm -hmm. and it was this athleisure, it was really nice. And bro, to be completely honest, it fully flopped. Like, I don't think I've ever said this, but I lost like 25 grand on it. Like I put 40 grand into it. Um, I only made like 20 grand on it mm -hmm. and it fully flopped. And now thinking back on it, the only reason why the female stuff was selling was because of the co-founder, because of my ex. So um, moving on to like authentic collection, yeah, the first thing I did was continue to do the female stuff and it, and it fully flopped and um, now authentic collection is just a male brand. Okay. Um, so even in the winter stuff, we try to do unisex stuff, but I didn't even lean into like the word authentic or trying to put nice messages on the garments mm -hmm. or like, you know, things I stand for. I just kind of thought slap the logo on it and hope for sales. So um, that's another audit that I've done with the brand. Um, it's going to be a huge rebranding of like just having like manifestation, gratitude, angel numbers, like this whole holistic stuff. And I want to have all of that represented on the garment. So I I'm super pumped for that. It's been it's been really difficult. Um, I, I won't beat around the bush. Like, mm. I, I think I'm down this year, to be honest. Um, like, going from a clothing brand where the the sort of brand identity and the brand strategy was relied heavily on, like, a star couple or, like, a brand where it was, like, you know, two sort of power couples um, going into now, like, I don't want anyone to know that authentic collections mine. I want yeah. it to sort of be detached from your name. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. um, there's a huge rebranding, like the name will stay the same, but in terms of what the brand stands for and what it's going to look like, um, I'm super pumped for the next like three to six months for it. That's all. Thanks for sharing, man. It's, um, what, what do you think is like, how important do you place, sorry, what importance do you place on community around a brand like that or any brand in general? Like I'm assuming with Third Fix, um, you guys would be quite big on, on trying to build that community of your own customers and, and being loyal to the customers that are loyal to you. So I guess what order of, uh, of importance, um, would, how would you list the order of importance when building a brand such as Authentic Collection? Is it making sure the product is the number one thing and then from there, like what's the next kind of uh, thing in line? Yeah, so for me, um, I tell everyone on my mentorship to create a Ferris wheel. So if you have three key elements to your brand, you don't have to think about anything else. So for Third Fix, our fer Ferris wheel is creating solution-based products Secondly, is advertising on a range of um, on socials, like marketing mm -hmm. sort of thing. And then the third one is having like really, really good customer service so that the overall customer experience is amazing. And then authentic collection is having garments that represent um, a holistic approach. Like that's the new yeah. rebranding thing. And then having amazing customer service. Like mm -hmm. I believe customer service would almost be up there. Um, because, you know, if anything goes wrong or um, you need to know about your tracking, it always comes back to customer service. Mm -hmm. And that's where a lot of, like, reviews come from as well. If your customer yeah. service is good. It's almost like the first impression. Yeah, exactly. So I believe the product is, is central. That mm. should be first. Um, but then community is, is really, really important. You look at the brands that are doing really well. They have, like, a very niche community and, and they lean in on that. Um, so I'd say product community and then customer service. If, if you have those three in, in your Ferris wheel, you don't need to like think about anything else. All yeah. the marketing, content creation, that all comes from just like delegating and, and yeah. what a business is. But if you lean in on those three things, it's, it's all you need to do. I like that analogy. Do you, do you see yourself staying um, or, or ever getting rid or selling third fix and, and stepping away from it completely, knowing it is kind of your baby that you, you first started? Yeah, I actually got offered a, a pretty good offer like in the last week for third fix. Um, it's a pretty big lump sum plus 25%, uh, like for me to stay in 25% mm -hmm. of it. Um, and it's something that I never thought of, like creating the brand, it wasn't like, okay, I want to create Australia's number one fitness bottle, this, this shaker bottle that 
gets rid of all generic shaker bottles in the gym and then from there want to sell it for 100 million or whatever it is. Mm. That was never the goal. But as you get older and as you, you know, you learn from others and you network from others, um, I think at the type of person I am as well is like always wanting to do other things yeah. and I like spread myself and, and do things. So I don't know. I, I I have to really think about about this offer, but I just I love what I do so much, man. Mm. Like everything about Third Fix, from the sustainability to solving a problem to marketing and strategize. I, I fucking love it, man. Yeah. It like really gets me going. Um, so I don't I don't see myself ever completely getting rid of it, yep. especially because I've, I've only just touched the surface, like of where it can go. I, I don't do any ads internationally. I'm in no gym stores in the US, UK, and those populations over there, man, are crazy. Like yep. Australia is so so small. So um, I'm really excited for where that brand's headed. Like a big thing for me is manifesting a successful like launch in the US and UK, and that that's where my goals are next year. With Authentic Collection, Third Fix, and then even your own personal brand, um, which which you have some really great content and really engaging content, what do you think at the moment is is the the most engaging platform? Firstly, and then the best way to deliver that content is it? Do you, and you think it's going to stick around with like real short form, um, highly engaging type of uh, of stuff like that, or where do you see it going? Man, I think TikTok's number one at the moment. Like the way that algorithm works and how you can go viral on there is is crazy. Like I've had the app for three, four months and like already hit 50K followers and like there's some videos that have millions and millions of views and it's just, it's mental. Mm. But um, I think what we're doing here, a podcast is is really good because you can then cut cut it up into short form so you have this long form content and then you have short form um and then you also have so many listeners community building i, I believe podcasts is um isn't going anywhere like everyone listens to podcasts um but in terms of like giving out tips or to any brand owners out there if you don't have a tiktok like please create one <laughs> upload every single day and just like wait for the numbers to build and build like it's pretty crazy um my percentages right now is uh, 60% Facebook, Instagram, 20% Google, and 20% TikTok. And last year, my TikTok was like 2% or something. So in terms of, let's say let's say I was to make a million dollars this year, that's 200K from TikTok. So it's pretty crazy in terms of an app that's only been around for like two, three years or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, so for me, bro, I, I think t- TikTok is king. And if you're not on it, you should be. I, I don't think it's... You know, I often talk about how it shouldn't be important what other people think of you. Um, but I also think that if you live by your own um, values, then that the rest will take care of itself. What are some of the values or what are your main values that you like to live by? And I guess, um, not to fucking put a damper on it, but um, at, say at your funeral, like what would you like people to kind of remember you by? Like what values and type of person would you like to be remembered as? I haven't really thought about that. Um, I've been instilled with good morals and values and what that looks like is um you know just like etiquette of like being a gentleman manners like the waiter is just as important as that billionaire ceo over there um but how i want to be remembered is definitely that just inspiring motivating guy where like my routines and habits and the success i've built off those routines and habits inspire the everyday person whether it's female male whoever um, they look to me as a, as a source of inspiration and information. And um, I hope I'm doing that at the moment because I get, I get huge fulfillment, man. I, I get messages all the time of people saying of like, you know, your routines have changed my life, your perspective um, on everything, whether it's gratitude, the, the spirituality of things and um, have changed their life. And, you know, we spoke about it before about, um, you know, I don't want to do it for them. Uh, first, I want to do it for myself, but mm-hmm. I get a lot of fulfillment from helping people. So hopefully at my funeral, I can be that inspiring, motivating young bloke who looked at life through gratitude and a positive aspect. Love that, man. How, uh, just as we kind of get, get towards the end here, how do you see um third fix continuing to grow like is there different aspects of the business that you want to add in um how does that continue to evolve so when i go into the gym there's still that generic ugly shaker getting around (laughs) like i really want to change that stigma of 
you know, it's it's just a protein shaker. Like your shakers suck, they smell, they're bad for your health. <laughs> and I really want to change uh, the stigma of how people look at that. So uh, the way I see it is definitely uh, I need to pick up my wholesale game 110%. And the way you do that is is through networking and talking to people. Um, so hopefully I can get some good deals in terms of distribution around the world. I really see Third Fix being um, the number one shaker bottle around the world. And like when I say that, like, I fucking mean it. And it feels really good saying that. So, man, Third Fix is only just scratching the surface and... I'm pumped for that brand and I'm also really excited for Authentic Collection. I feel like it's gone through a lot of hiccups, um, but that's all part of the journey and mm. that just makes the story so much cooler and um, it makes my job as a founder, as a creator, so much easier when the brand aligns to who I am as a person. So to have these garments uh, represent manifestation uh, gratitude like that whole sort of holistic and like self-development i'm really excited to see how that evolves and how i can build a community off that so excited about those two brands um i've got two other things that i've got in the works here too um and they're things that i don't want to put my name towards like everyone knows i'm that sort of like bottle guy um everyone knows i've, I've got a clothing brand as well i want to see these two brands that I create be really, really successful from the experience I've had with these other two brands of the strategies I've learned and everything I've learned. And I'm really pumped for them to be successful and for me to come out a year, two years down the track and say, I can do it without being an, an influencer or having you know, your name to something. Yeah. yeah. Mate, that's awesome. Well, fuck, I've, I've really enjoyed our chat today, brother. Um, I appreciate it and you're doing some awesome things and, and yeah, your content really is inspiring um, and it sounds like you're super happy, which is the most important thing, mate. So thanks for coming on the show today. I really appreciate it. Thanks, dude. bro. I love that. That was a good chat. It was really good. Uh, for everyone listening or whoever's watching as well, we'd love to love for you to share this episode if you've taken some value away from it. Um, and as I mentioned at the start of the show, we'll have all the links to Third Fix, Authentic Collection and all of um, Mitch's socials and whatnot in the show notes as well. Um, so thanks for listening, guys. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, guys.